Uh, got it. All right, Romans. I need prayer. How about we start with prayer? <laughs> Let's pray. God, thank you for this Monday. Um, you are with us each and every day. Be with us as we sit for just a little while with the word that is given to us so that it may nourish us, guide us, um, and feel your presence this day and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Nine. So I'm going to share my screen. Just some of like that they see the text. <laughs> That's good. All right. Nine. I can start. God's election of Israel is my title. So that's kind of interesting, right? Um, so here we go. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own brothers and sisters, my own flesh and blood. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenant, and the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Christ, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. It is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all those descendants from Israel are Israelites. And not all Abraham's children are, are his descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. For the word of the promise is this. About this time I will return and Sarah shall have a son. Nor is it that all something similar happened to Rebecca when she had conceived children by one husband and our ancestor Isaac, even before they had been born or had done anything good or bad, so that as God's purpose of election might continue, not by works, by his call. She was told, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. Anyone want to pick up with 14? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. But he says to Moses, I will have mercy whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power in you so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he chooses and he hardens the heart of whomever he chooses. Anybody else want to pick up with 19? God's back in mercy. So say to me then, why then do you still find fault? For who can his will? But who indeed are you, a human being, to argue with God? Will what is molded say to the one who molds it, Why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one object for special use and another for ordinary use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience? the objects of wrath that are made for destruction. And what if he has done so in order to make known the riches of his glory for the objects of mercy he has prepared beforehand for glory, including us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. As indeed he says in Hosea, those who were not my people, I will call my people. And her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, 
you are not my people. There they shall be called children of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. So the number of the children of Israel were like the sand of the sea. Only the remnant of them were to be saved. For the Lord will execute his sentence on the earth quickly and decisively. And if you start right there, Susan. So it's just as Isaiah said previously, unless the Lord Almighty has not descendants, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been like tomorrow. Israel's unvoid. What then say we? That, that the Gentiles who did not pursue the righteousness have obtained it, the righteousness that is by faith, but the people of Israel who pursue the law is the way of righteousness have not obtained their goal. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were by works. They stumbled over the stumble stone, as it is written. See, I lay on in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. Will that go have any answers for me? I have one question. Sure. One assumption. Am I right that they were called the children of Israel because they descended from Jacob, not because they came from the country of Israel? Because that Correct. wasn't even named at that point? Correct. Okay. You're yeah. right about right. that. Right. Jacob's name becomes. Yes. Israel, yes. right, and and I think we we touched on it in in Hebrew class. I think one of the first time because it, the word Israel means um, wrestled with God. Oh, okay. And that's where the name changes from. Is when Jacob yeah. wrestles with God by the river its edge before he went over to his brother Esau and his family. Mm -hmm many 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 years later um to make reconciliation so that's huge yeah now we talked about this yesterday because it came up in a hymn and it came up somewhere else yesterday the word ebenezer mm -hmm. doesn't that come out of that jacob was wrestling with god's story it has something to do with an altar doesn't it it does but i never think that in my head Ebenezer, and then it comes up in a song, that one song. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. It comes from uh, when Jacob was in the wilderness and he fell asleep and he had that dream about the ladder going up to yeah. God and everything. And, and you know, the angels came to him um, and, it, and it was said that he, um, on the rock that he laid his head, it's called an Ebenezer because um, God was there. Okay. Um, Ebenezer. Does that word actually translate? Or yeah. <clears throat> Try Ebenezer. Yeah, Eben Ezer. Um, yeah, the stone of help. Eben oh. Haezer. Okay. Um, the stone of help. Hmm? Let's see, and we'll just. I lost the split screen. Did you do something? Yeah, I did. I stopped. The okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks for questioning, though, because it's like, what did I do, you know? Um, well, yeah. First Samuel 7 is where that story of Jacob. First Samuel 7. What else you got? I'll share again. And then there's all this talk about the children of Israel and the people of Israel and his descendants. But then in the end, those 
many of those people did not believe in Jesus at all, or did not believe him to be the son of God. Right, right. Um, so, so it's kind of like under, yeah, understanding how through the life of Christ, the scope of God's mercy is. It's wider than what the history was um, and encompasses many, even like it, whereas to, even at C, which was really powerful. Um, those who are not my people, I will call my people. And her who is not beloved, I will call beloved. The very place where it is said to them, you are not my people, there shall be the children of the living God. So it's just kind of, and he's painting, he's affirming the history um, that the Jews in Rome have, um, but he's also bringing in the prophets. Hosea was a prophet. Um, Jacob and his story is foundational to the understanding of God, especially reconciliation. Um, so he has used the prophets to speak into the future. righteousness and fulfilling the law are rejected by God? Let me read that. Where, it's, it's, what's... Um, well, from 30 on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, he's trying, so we got to, yes, I mean, not, I, how do I want to say it? So this group is a mixed group of people, right? We have Jews who understand Abraham and Moses and the covenants. Um, and we have these Gentiles who are <clears throat> post-resurrection are hearing the good news of God through Jesus Christ. Um, and they understand, understand Christ Jesus as a covenant to the a whole world, not just people, but the whole world. Um, and they're hearing what he has said throughout his life. They're hearing what he has done. Um, and for a long time, um, the people, the Jewish people in that new Christian community in Rome understood their relationship with God as fulfilling the law, right? Um, and in the gospels, one of the um, Pharisees asked about the law and um, what did Jesus say about it? He did not come to abolish the law, but he himself have came to fulfill the law, which means that the new focus, the new starting point is how believing on the covenant of Christ through the cross shapes your understanding of God rather than the law. It's going to address that Oh, good. Yeah. Mary's looking ahead. But does that help a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So, uh, so for example, like uh, for me in understanding that have like in Indiana, there was a couple spots having the 10 commandments right outside a courthouse didn't make sense to me because it, it, it was because Christ came to fulfill the law. And, and really in essence, we're not 
we're not supposed to like I, I keep telling the confirmation we're not supposed to like go free you know we're, i mean we are free but we're also understand that we have parameters in the freedom that christ gives us so we in fulfilling the law which is fulfilling the Ten Commandments, because when you study the Ten Commandments and you study the life of Christ, it kind of makes sense, it gels together, um, is loving God, which is what the, most of the ten, you know, ten Commandments about God and worship and everything, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And that's what the other um, commandments are, is, is making sure that you are understanding how important and special you are and taking care of yourself, taking care of your neighbors so that um, the fulfillment can be seen visually. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Didn't they have a bid set to in Marshfield years ago because there was a, a, a set of the Ten Commandments, the statue, way on the south side near the school, and there was a big set. They argued about that for years. I don't even remember how. There was also the, the Statue of Christ was one. I think that's way out near the, near the um, Statue of Christ. Mm. Oh yeah, the Christ that's one, the yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I'm not against, <clears throat> you know, monuments and things like that. It's just, how do we, how do we interpret that? How do we understand that for the better of the community? Well, it's an, unfortunate. I think that so many people see a statue of Christ and, and, and worship the statue. They don't, they don't actually see the statue as a, a monument to Christ and a reminder of Jesus. They right. think the statue is Sometimes, yeah, Sacred. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, it, it right now. Here's the thing, like uh, in my in understanding. If you make, for example, a cement statue mm -hmm. of Jesus, how do we treat it then? Because, I mean, so really, I would say that if you make a picture or something important of that caliber, that we should treat it with respect, you know? Um, so, but, you know, not to the point of like, this is Jesus, yeah, but there right. needs to be, if you're going to do that, then that needs to be important. Um, <clears throat> You know, sometimes I've I've gotten like, for example, a lot of people. You know, this is the Bible is the word, and they've had a whole bunch of like, you know, those inserts, the celebrate inserts, or have had like the scripture readings on it. They were like, so if this is really important, then why do we throw the word in the trash when we're done? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, that's so. I mean. It's important. I mean, it would, be, it would be better to recycle for sure. Um, but, you know, then why what, what do we really need it printed all the time? Mm -hmm. That made me think. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh huh. And that could be and that could be interpreted as that as well. There wasn't really any. I was looking at the Greek. There wasn't any really interesting Greek words in here. Though the number of children are like the sand on the uh, number of children of Israel are like sand on the sea. Only a woman can then will be saved. <laughs> Yeah, what's twenty seven? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? <clears throat> hmm. 
How do you? Well, it certainly reads like those are the people that did not accept Jesus as the Son of God and they won't be saved. Is that how it would literally? <coughs> Where are you reading? Verse 27, uh, verse 27 and, nine. and 9. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of children of Israel were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will execute a sentence on the earth quickly and decisively. And as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left survivors to us, we would, we would have fared like Sodom and been made like Gomorrah. <laughs> Then, but Israel, who did strive for righteousness that is based on the law, did not succeed in fulfilling the law because they didn't, they, they fulfilled laws, but not the acceptance of Jesus. Right. What is the word that could have been in it? I say a 10. Romans 10, where are you? Oh, oh. Verse 28. so the Septuagint was um, really old copy of the Hebrew text. Oh, wasn't that Hebrew into Greek? Yes. Okay. Yep, so that's just a reference to the Septuagint. Okay. Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Okay, is that, is that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they I referring to the Wisconsin people have some? Them, some, yeah, yeah, them too. They believe they're into that also. But like a fixed number? Yeah. Yes. I've never heard that. I have. I have. Oh, yeah. I have. And that they Wisconsin believe Citizen. this number is going to be Wisconsin people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So here's the one thing that I can only kind of decipher from this, um, that for the Lord will execute a sentence on the earth quickly and decisively. How did God do that? It's almost a Sunday school answer. What, what verse was that? Can I go back and look? Uh, 28. 28. Because we got to remember that this is Paul writing to the people of Rome. Right. Is this the judgment day? No. Well, the Babylonian exile. So he's referencing the Old Testament, right? But he has the Roman church in mind. Because he's been talking about the covenant and talking about how God has, what God has done. But he's taking the scripture from Isaiah and moving it to the future. Because even Isaiah pointed out to this as well. For the Lord will execute his sentence on the earth quickly and decisively. Isaiah pointed to this a lot. Pretty much Jesus on the cross. That was God's judgment and decision for the mm -hmm. earth. Christ's crucifixion on the cross. Throughout Isaiah, we have the suffering servant. Isaiah calls to people that there will be a Messiah. There will be someone who will suffer for the sins of many. Um, so that, that's the act. Um,
And then, as, and then he continues with Isaiah, as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left survivors to us, we would have fared like Sodom and made like Gomorrah, um, which is definitely something that people remember um, for the simple fact that it was, you know, this was part of Abraham's story. Um, and one of the things that, I mean, the big crux of uh, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is that um, they did not treat others well. And so that was a big piece of not upholding the covenant. Um, so in essence, I mean, yes, they're talking about um, only a remnant of them will be saved. But with that kind of Sodom and Gomorrah piece, it's, it's, it's that we have survived this existence in order to be witnesses to the covenant God made for us through Jesus Christ. So there is, so he's holding God's understanding of wrath, intention with mercy as like the other bookend. Well, maybe we need to keep going on to 10. Joyce, do you have any wisdom? Do I have any wisdom uh, about yeah. those chapters or what? Yeah, anything. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I was reading, I looked at, read the commentary here with verses 27 through 29, you know, when yeah. it talks when it talks about so few uh, being survivors, it's because it, it, it's explained that um, you know Paul preached to all the Jewish people, but there were so few of them who um, who followed Christ then, who followed him. It was a struggle. Stru yeah. And, and it's the same way today. There's so few people who hear the word and, um, you know, accept Christ compared to the number of people who could. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to hear, like read a letter from Paul to the churches now. Like, what would <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and, and during this time, then just like even then is, is like, how do we, how do we treat God? What's our relationship with God and how do we treat people? And maybe that's, maybe those are the two simple, simple things that churches are called to ask in order to make that connection of Christ greater in the world. Mm -hmm. It sounds so people, and it sounds so simple. I love God and love the people around you, but sometimes it's so hard to pull off. Correct. Right. And that's where we fall short, as Paul has pointed out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was thinking about this. You talked about the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between a Samaritan and a Sumerian? Because I know she's known as a Sumerian, and then there's the story of the Good Samaritan. It occurred to me. Is it gender? Uh, or is it she's a Samaritan woman? That's Samaritan. Samaritan woman. I'm pretty sure, right? Doesn't that mean from Samaria? Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Is Samarian? Yes. They're both is from the same. Samarian more of an adjective. Probably. Yeah. She's a Samarian woman. So okay, but she also. Mm -hmm. Right. I see. Okay. Yes. Yes, and both people are from the same area. Yeah, figured, You're right about I didn't that. Understand. Mm -hmm. yep. They were believers. Right. But they just had practices that were. So going back to the history, like um, there were the 12 tribes of Israel, and then all of a sudden, um, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, and throughout the Old Testament, you will read how the Ark of the Covenant, they kept moving it back and forth. Mm -hmm. But they were like, oh, we have God and we have God and we have God. And then it, all of a sudden it shifted and, you know, the temple was built mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Um, 
but it just kind of divided there. So the people in the um, Northern Kingdom didn't have Jerusalem, but they worshiped God. And so they figured out how to do it on their own. In the Southern Kingdom, they had Jerusalem and that's where they worshiped God. Fascinating, right? <laughs> Not interesting. Yeah. Well. Right. A lot of people say, I have God. We are the true church. Okay. Got it. Sure. You are loved by Jesus. No doubt. <laughs> but it's interesting that some of these congregations, uh, denominations, we have to Yeah. They're, they're all religions that weren't around <laughs> at the time of Christ. Right. All, so sure. many are that have been invented in the thousands of years since Christ. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. There's only one church that I, that, I mean, a few of them, but one that was named after the Martoma Church of India. Um, they are, their history claim that Thomas, the you know disciple uh, after the resurrection traveled all the way there and started churches. So that's the Martoma Church has been around for a long time. Um, so that's kind of interesting and fascinating to me. Yeah. Very uncomfortable with the fact that they never talk about Thomas again. Yeah. I, I just think that yeah, that's oh, interesting. That's an interesting yeah. topic. All right. Ah. I must, I, I'd be fascinated to hear more. All right, Romans 10. It's 10. Do you want to keep, you want to start it off again? Yeah. I, I'll read. Oh, I, I think, okay, Joyce, you start. Okay. Who are you going to have read? Susie, for a little oh. bit. Okay, all right, that's okay. Go ahead. Susie, go start. My heart's desire in prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are jealous, jealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that they may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes about, writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will descend into heaven that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is, the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe that you are just that and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who fall on him. For everyone who falls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Joyce, you want to pick up with 14? But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, 
How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, but not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Again, I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But if Israel of Israel, he says, all day long, I have held up my hands to a disobedient, disobedient and contrary people. You can see where repeatedly yeah. where Paul is such a student of the Old Testament. Absolutely. And what Moses said, what Isaiah said, yep. what Jeremiah yep. said, it all goes back to the Old Testament document mm -hmm. to his point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does this help clarify or anything or make more questions? Mm -hmm. but <clears throat> he's, I mean, he still is uh, rejecting a lot of people from salvation. What do you mean? What do you like? Well, tell me more. Like, you know, he says you have to. Where is it? Um, you have to confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, and you will be saved. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, a lot, a lot of the people that he grew up with, the Jews, are not doing that. Sure. How are they to call on someone who they have not heard? Right. But he doesn't mm -hmm. actually but he doesn't answer, answer that, that he question. A lot of questions right. even yeah. then from this portion yeah. of time. But it's they're kind of rhetorical and and he's not yeah. really going to answer. Well, his answer is we have to go out and tell the good news. To right. People. Right. Um, that's a small percentage. <laughs> right, <are> right. <laughs> I'm always uncomfortable with that idea. Really? I yeah. Am. I mean, yeah. Well, and, and going back to Paul, he's in trying to encourage the Gentiles who he's been painting this picture as they are the ones that get it. And, you know, I don't think all of the Jewish people people in the community of that church in Rome are are not confessing you know it's probably just a, a struggle or just a, a learning curve in a sense so he is calling the people that have this good understanding to um continue to preach the good news to the people to paint that in their lives so that they can begin to understand it. Um, I think that's crucial for us too, is not just the pastor who hears the good news. Um, you know, but I don't, you know, it, 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 is it difficult? Sometimes it is. Um, do you have to be direct about it? Probably not. You can. Um, but there's, I think there's a lot of ways that you can proclaim good news. Oh, that puts a lot of responsibility on his followers. Oh, yeah. Paul put a lot of responsibility um, on his followers at every church. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was the matter of fact during the church in Rome. 
in a lot of churches and, and other areas of the world. The other um, piece that when I read this part of Rome, um, Romans and um, is the understand like there's always the question of like if you're dying and you say Jesus is Lord does it count you know mm -hmm. right at mm -hmm. the end and I would think that it does you know uh, but that mm -hmm. doesn't sit well with a lot of people kind mm -hmm. of like how this quarrel in between with the people who have been dedicated their whole life long um that's like salvation by work Rather than sure. And then does it need to be loud and bold? Mm -hmm. Do you need to say on a street corner with a megaphone that Jesus yeah. is Lord? Or can you just whisper it silently mm -hmm. or, or proclaim it within your heart? Sometimes, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't think I'm the only person that in silence you, you kind of listen to the still small voice that's yeah. inside of you that and that's what I declare is like what's happening in your heart. Um, there's no test for that. Any other wisdom or thoughts? Isn't it interesting the way they end the chapter? All day long, I have held my hand, out my hands to a disobedient and contrary yeah. people. <laughs> so yeah. There's, there's no big answers, but boy, there's a big. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of reassuring. That sentence is kind of reassuring. <laughs> it's reassuring. Yeah. What's reassuring? That that sentence. I have held out my hands to. You know, God still. That's still definitely yeah, still yeah. <laughs> okay now that um the um title for starting at chapter or verse five is mm -hmm. salvation is for all. Mm -hmm. And is that what he's saying? It doesn't really seem to me that that's what he's saying until that last part. <laughs> well, until you mean verse 21? Uh, yes. So salvation is for all through Jesus Christ. Christ and the cross was not meant for us an elect or, uh, or a specific group of people. Right. Right. So salvation is for all through that understanding. And you could also take all day long, I've held up my hands to disobedient and contrary people. What was, what do we read about Christ and the cross? What was that scene like? Okay. Okay. A little bit. A little bit, right? Yeah. Um, Christ's hands are on the cross, right? When your hands are on the cross, they are extended, which she says all day long. I've held up my hands. Wow. And what kind of people were around Jesus at that time? Thief, thief, and you mean on on what the else? truth. On the two crosses, there were. What else? The people that put him to death, what were they? Yeah. Disobedient and contrary oh, uh -huh. people. Yeah. Right? And I mean, not everybody in that group. There were people who saw this and were like, and, and walked with Jesus to this point and mm -hmm. beyond this point. Um, but again, Paul is pointing to the cross because the cross is never going to go away from our understanding of the cross is what saved us 
and is the sign of the covenant for us. And really, in essence, I mean, when you want, I mean, I don't mind crucifixions or crucif I do mind crucifixions. I do not mind <laughs> looking at crucifixes. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, as a reminder of Christ's arms extended in pain, in suffering for me. Like that. It's gruesome sometimes. There are some artists that they do a um, but all day long. And I think God will always do that. God's arms will always be held out for all, even if we are disobedient <laughs> and pain in the butts. Um, because that's God's position of mercy and love in the world. Don't you think? Yeah, I guess so. I <clears throat> Even though Paul is very much evidence, a true scholar of the prophets, of the law, of the Old Testament, his... Um, conversion story exactly. his understanding is that much more powerful and that shines through yep what do you think joyce well these i've thought about these chapters in romans they are they are chap they are verses that are that are very familiar to us that we hear over and over um especially at funerals and um sure. a lot to think about you know? yeah good news is always meant to be proclaimed Mm -hmm. Here, Kathy, you, the chapter headings of chapter 11, Israel's rejection is not final, and then the salvation of Israel, and then all Israel will be saved. This isn't the end. This isn't the end, my friend. <laughs> no. Grafted. Grafted, right? Grafted, yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, these, these titles will, are helpful, but sometimes it's like kind of breaks it up and you don't, you don't remember does. what's come before. It does, but if you're actually looking for something, those are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So don't be a stumbling block, people, right? Be a stumbling block. Well, we've been at this for not quite an hour. Um, and we have what, 11 and 12, 13, 14, and 15 and 16 are the last ones. So mm -hmm. we want to stop there and meet three more times? Yes. All right. Fantastic. Well, that sounds like not next, week. not next week. No, but you know, if you wanted to, you could read it on your own.